Good day and welcome to Impact News. I am Carol Angela Davis with your stories for the week. Folks, we got to begin with these white nationalists. They have just caused havoc all everywhere they go. They cause chaos and havoc and the things that we now have to be concerned about because we have to deal with their silliness, which is based only on hate and insecurity. Now a train hopper car loaded with 30 tons of ammonium nitrate, guess what? Well, it's missing. The, the ni ammonium nitrate is missing and ammonium nitrate is used as a fertilizer and as a component in explosives. That's right. It apparently went missing during shipment from Wyoming to California. Somehow it miraculously disappeared. State and federal authorities are investigating as they are the manufacturer and Union Pacific. That's the, every time we turn around, it's something with Union Pacific. That's the railroad that handled the shipment. National Public Radio says the uh, loaded, it was loaded, it was covered. They say it left Dino Noble Explosives Plant in Cheyenne, Wyoming on April 12th. But when it would arrived in California, in Mojave, California, two weeks later, it was empty. Okay. All right. Now, Dino says the car was sealed when it left its plant and that those seals were still intact when it reached uh, its location in California. The company believes a leak in one of the hopper's bottom gates may have developed during transit, while a Federal Railroad Administration representative investigation suggests that maybe one of the gates was not properly closed. I don't know what happened, but here's what I do know. In a world full of, full of hate and full of white nationalists who are willing to do anything for their little grievance about how they don't have enough of what they want, regardless of what has happened or been done or is being done to others, in that world, we have to be very, very careful because remember this, ammonium nitrate, that was an ingredient in the homemade truck bomb that was used in the 1995 attack on the Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. Now, its sale and transfer has been regulated ever since 2007 to prevent its use in acts of terrorism. So, we don't know where the ammonium nitrate is, neither do they. It could be in the hands of nefarious people. It could have leaked if it leaked all the way from its, its initial location all, from Wyoming all the way to California, then it's in the ground. I mean, these railroads, the, the lack of stronger regulation and the relaxing of rules against corporate entities is going to lead to all of our destruction if we don't stop these people. Stay with me. I'll be back with your news. Thanks for staying with me for your news for the week. We're going to begin in the state of Florida, uh, where Ron DeSantis is proving up his white nationalist credentials and doing it with a vengeance, I might add. Okay, now the NAACP is issuing a formal travel advisory, okay, saying the state has become hostile to black Americans. The NAACP says Florida has engaged in an all-out attack against black Americans. Uh, the NAACP says that the, the attack is against the accurate black history. It's against voting rights. It's against members of the LGBT community and, of course, the general community at large. And we should tell you that this NAACP advisory, it does follow similar actions from the League of United Latin American Citizens and also from LGBTQ advocacy group Equality Florida. Each has also issued a travel advisory. Then let's go to Beyonce and Jay-Z. Wow, it's unbelievable. They're reportedly buying the most expensive piece of real estate ever sold, home, I should say, ever sold in the state of California, folks. That's right. And the second most expensive piece of real estate sold in the United States. The cost is 200 million bucks. Apparently it's a 30,000 square foot Malibu mansion on eight acres of land overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Wow, okay. Then let's go on to this 13 year old black youth. He's from Oklahoma. He's the youngest to graduate college with two degrees in cybersecurity and computer science. <laughs> it's amazing. His name, you're not going to believe it, folks. It's Elijah Muhammad. That's right, people. He is from Oklahoma City. He graduated from Oklahoma State University. He's also, Elijah has 10 IBM certifications. He also has one Google IT certification. His sister, Shania Muhammad, she says this. She says he's the smartest person she knows, and she should know because she graduated from college at 15. <laughs> Congratulations, family. All right, let's move on to more news, folks. We're going to go to Adidas. They're about to begin selling the, its stockpile of Yeezy sneakers. Now, it all starts this month. The retailer is going to donate the proceeds to the Philanese and Keita Floyd Institute for Social Change, also to the Anti-Defamation League, okay? 
It's about a billion dollars worth of leftover Yeezy sneakers. Now, the Anti-Defamation League fights anti-Semitism and other forms of discrimination. And the Phil East and Keita Floyd Institute for Social Change is run by social justice activist Phil and East Floyd. He, of course, is George Floyd's brother. Now, Adidas says, quote, there is no place in society for hate of any kind, and we remain committed to fighting against it, unquote. Yeezy products have been unavailable to shoppers since Adidas terminated its partnership with Kanye West after West made anti-Semitic comments. Moving on, let's go to New York City, where we should tell you, believe it or not, Manhattan is sinking. Oh, yeah, it, it, that, that's real, okay? It's because of over a million buildings weighing a total of 1.7 trillion pounds, folks. The city is dropping closer to the water by about one to two millimeters every year, with some areas sinking even faster. In New York City, the threat of sea level rise is three to four times higher than the global average along the, uh, the, the Atlantic coast of North America. Lower Manhattan is particularly at risk, but there are concerns about Brooklyn and Queens also. Now, we should tell you that ultimately 8.4 million people are at risk and 90% of the 67,400 structures in the expanded post-hurricane Sandy flood risk areas, guess what? They have not been built to floodplain standards, so there's some challenges there. All right, then let's go to some more uh, news on global warming. Scientists warned that the world is on track for 2.7 Celsius or about, are you ready for this? 37 degrees Fahrenheit of warming and phenomenal, that's the word used by the scientists, not me, and phenomenal human suffering. Right, the heat's going to push 2 billion people outside the zone of it's the, called the human climate niche where we can live comfortably. It's going to push about 2 billion people outside of that. And that's where humanity has flourished for millennial folks. India and Nigeria are, seem to be facing the worst challenges. India is already suffering from extreme heat waves. And a recent study found that more than a third, folks, of heat-related deaths in the summer from 1991 to 2018 occurred as a direct result of human-caused global heating. One scientist says these high temperatures are linked to the following. Are you ready for this? Of course, increased mortality, but also decreased labor productivity, decreased cognitive performance. Yes, impaired learning, adverse pregnancy outcomes, decreased crop yield, increased conflict. Well, we know that. We can see that from the people coming down to, to the United States southern border. And infectious disease spread. Can you spell pandemic? One thing we can do now to adapt to these high temperatures is to increase green spaces in cities. And that can shave five degrees Celsius off extreme temperatures and, of course, provide shade. Don't cut down a tree and plant another one if you can. All right, let's look at your health. There's a Parkinson's warning, warning out here. UCLA and Harvard researchers, they have identified 10 neurotoxic pesticides that are currently in use that significantly harm neurons implicated in the development of Parkinson's disease, folks. Yes, a particular blend used in cotton farming, it showed increased toxic toxicity. California is the nation's largest agricultural producer and exporter, and in California alone, there are nearly 14,000 pesticide products with over 1,000 active ingredients registered for use. Also today, we're going to look at, finally today, we look at the diaspora where 23-year-old Leona Sorayo is trying to become the first black woman pilot to fly around the world solo. She plans to begin her three-month journey this summer. She's going to leave from New York City and her flight's going to cover 33 countries, yes ma'am, spanning four continents. Now reportedly out of the 158,000 globally licensed pilots, only 150 are black women. That has to change. That's less than 1% of the total figure. Now, Soraya, for, as for her, she was born in the United States, but raised in the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's a country in Central Africa. She returned to the U.S. from Africa, completed a six-month intensive pilot program, and paid $70,000 for her flight school. We wish her well. We will continue to follow her journey. And you stay with us. We'll be right back with more. We've got Missing Ask Dr. K, the International Report, the Financial uh, News, and the Slay Word. Stay with us. Time to level up that vocab, folks. It is the Slay Word of the Week, and the word this week is consinity. C-O-N-C-I-N-N-I-T-Y, consinity. 
Uh, it is a noun, which means it's a person, place, or a thing, and its origin is in the Latin from the 16th century. Yes, you heard me correctly. It's been around a long time. The definition of consinity is the skillful fitting together of the different parts of something. Okay, let's use it in a sentence. Both Special Prosecutor Jack Smith, oh yeah, and Fulton County Prosecutor Fonnie Willis, they both show a model of consinity as they put together the pieces of the investigation into Donald Trump that I'm sure will lead to an indictment. Sentence number two, the combined effect of the performance, stage sets, and the dazzling lighting made the Broadway show a model of consinity. Consinity, that's your slay word of the week. It means the skillful fitting together of the different parts of something. Use that word all week. Guess what? You will slay it and level up that vocab. I'm just sick and tired of us not spending time together lately. Hello, baby. Hello. I'm sorry I haven't spent time with you. I have been working on this big deal. It's going to bring a lot more money to the household for it. What you doing here, boss? Yeah, just checking to see if you still got it. Take this work. I'm a partner. I don't want it back. You seen the movies, man. I know how this goes. You seen the movies, huh? Did you see Goodfellas, New Jack City? Scott, everything I do is for you. Like, I just need a little bit more time, man. Fine bullshit. He, like I said, he's gonna call any second. Why do you take a look at this video? Guess what? It's starring you. Thank you for staying with us for this missing segment as we search for our missing African-American girls. And this week, we want to focus on Sherelle Walker. So with your help, we're going to find her, Sherelle Walker, okay? She was 17 years old, just 17 years old when she was reported missing. And that happened on February 3rd of this year. And she went missing in Austin, Texas. Now, she's about five foot one inches tall. She has black hair. She has brown eyes. And she weighs about 190 pounds. Her name, again, is Sherelle Walker, 17 years old, missing in February from Austin, Texas. Now, you know we're looking for her. And with your help, we're going to find her. Thanks for staying with us. It's time for the International Report with Dr. Inyang Ebong Harshup. You know her because, of course, she spent 30 years with the United Nations traveling the world. Ina, you're the expert on international relations. Tell us what's going on. Well, you know, Carol, I'm sorry, but as a, as a really um, mature and disciplined person, I have to talk about climate change. I mean, that's really the only thing that we should be talking about today. I was reading a headline where it said climate change has caused two million deaths in the last 50 years. And so, um, you know, the extreme weather has caused two million deaths and $4.3 trillion worth of economic damage. But let's look at the people for a minute, okay? And 90% of the deaths were because of climate and climate disasters. And um, we just saw big climate problems in Bangladesh and in Myanmar. But what's really interesting is that human beings learn. Because I remember when I was in the UN, we would talk about disaster risk reduction and early warning systems. And we would try and convince governments to put them into place. And what we've seen, the deaths by um, disaster have gone down sufficiently that we only had 22,608 deaths of people in 2020 and 2021. Why? Because the early warning system. Mm -hmm. And people are being able to take shelter, protect, protect themselves, etc. The thing is, though, that the UN has launched a plan to ensure that all nations are covered by disaster early warning systems by the end of 2027. That's what, three years away? Four years away? To date, only half the world's countries have such systems in place. Wow, are, are you so? So you are hopeful. It sounds like if we have the early warning systems, and are you hopeful that countries will actually do it? Oh, I I don't see what other choice they have now. I mean, what we used to tell them as warnings: look, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. Has happened. 
But you know, Edie, I, you know, I, I wonder if people, uh, let's talk about the United States. I mean, I know you've been to God knows how many countries, but let's just talk a minute about the United States. Does the United States get it? Do the average garden, does the average garden variety person get it? I think the average garden variety person sees that something is happening and something is changing quite rapidly where the weather is concerned and that they could no longer deny that there's a problem. And also, this article that I'm working with today, as we're discussing, talked about the trillions of dollars worth of damage. And the places that have been most severely hit are developed countries, the United States, England, Europe, etc. Look at what happened in Italy the other day and all that flooding in Spain. I mean, there's constant flooding. So they're losing all their investment. So you think that might make people sit up and say, uh, maybe we should plant a few trees here and there and stop consuming all this crap? Yes, I mean, I, I definitely think that the fact that we can say that we have managed to go down such a significant amount of death is because of early warning systems. And that's pretty amazing. I don't know what you can do in terms of the economic losses, because the fact is the climate is changing and the disasters will come and there will be loss of limb, property, life, etc. There will be. There will be. There's no question about this. We have everybody has to do their part to make sure it's not you and your loved ones. And in making sure it's not you and your loved ones, guess what? You'll make sure it's not someone else and their loved one as well, just by doing your part. So we're hopeful. Yes. And I, I want to close by saying that even though 60% um, of the losses were due to weather and weather-related disasters in the north, in the, the global north, more in more than four-fifths of the cases, the economic losses for each disaster were equivalent to less than 0.1% of their GDP. So obviously it hasn't hit them yet where it really, really hurts. It's going to, because you know, it's like a runaway train. So we'll see what happens. Good that we've got some hope on the horizon. Thank you so much, Dr. Inyang Ebon Harshup. She takes the temperature of what's going on around the world, brings it to you every week. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you, Inyang. Thank you, Carol. Welcome to your financial news. I am Carol Angela Davis. Folks, people are not feeling so good about their finances. Now, the Fed says the share of Americans who feel worse, shall we say, about their finances is at the highest level since 2014. That's right, folks. In fact, in 2022, you should know that 35% of U.S. adults reported that, that they were worse off financially than a year earlier. That is the highest point since the question was first posed, and that was in 2014, eight years ago. 73% said they're doing okay or living comfortably financially. That is That by itself is down five percentage points from the previous years. And folks, it is among the lowest levels since 2016. The slump in financial well-being occurred an, along every single group you could think of. Every racial and ethnic, every income, every education group, all of them registered a decline and inflation is the most common financial challenge. And we call it inflation. I call it greed because that's all it is. It's just greed. Why is the packaging getting smaller and the size in the packaging is also getting smaller? It's not the same amount of food just in a smaller package. It's less food in a less package for more money. That's nothing but greed. You can talk inflation all you want to. That's greed. All right, let's move on. Looking at Tesla owned by Elon Musk, who himself is a problem for African-Americans. You know, they just won that big discrimination suit against him. That's probably why Tesla has so many unsold vehicles, because people just don't want them. The price reductions are only helping so much when it comes to selling cars. Tesla is cutting prices and it's, it's, it's not really cutting prices. You know, they don't call it cutting prices. They call them inventory discounts, but really the deal is they're not selling cars. But we all know that today and after Elon Musk showed who he is, many people just don't want a Tesla or anything associated with Elon Musk. So you all need to think about that board of directors. You better think about what Elon Musk is doing to your brand, because as African-Americans, most of us are simply not interested in anything he has. Stay with me. Anyone who thinks that slavery ended uh, in the 1860s with the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation are grievously wrong. If we caught a bird, we ate good feathers and ate the bird. We didn't have nothing to cook on. We didn't have no stove. You know who you are and who we are. 
we're still on a big plantation. She was bonded to them until they died. She was their slave. They said, well, we're going to be killed tonight. Who is that same white dude? Keep terrorists there. Or Russian spies. Or the KGB. And the government wouldn't know it? No. They thought I was beat so bad that I couldn't do nothing, but I did. We're closing out the show with your health in mind. Welcome, Dr. K. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, boy, Carol, I want to go way, way back. And uh, there's a book. It's written by Tom Hartman. He's a radio host. But as a side thing, he wrote a book called Walking Your Blues Away. Now, this is a th this book might be approaching 20 years old. And what the book is basically saying is the importance of motion and walking to the human mental health. And basically what it says is that when the act of uniting two sides of your body through motion, even if you're not swinging your arms, your legs are moving. And by doing that, you basically put a mixer in your brain. In other words, you bring the right side of chemicals to the left side of chemicals and mix them all up. And it's a, it's a point of emotional healing from trauma. Mm. It's a point of reasoning, working things out mm -hmm. and, 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 and healing from so many different things and allowing the brain to really use all of its chemicals, use some of the chemicals that it's stored. And uh, it, it's just a fantastic book, Walking Your Blues Away. So. In the brain, there's something called the hippocampus, and the hippocampus is the notepad for the brain. So all day long, the hippocampus is taking notes. And when we go to bed at night, the hippocampus basically uploads the notepad to the hard drive. And by uploading it to the hard drive, it accesses all these things into the hard drive of the brain, and then the hard drive can digest it, the hard drive can do the laundry, the, the hard drive can, can put it in perspective. The hard drive can put it in your memory. Hmm. It can do all of that. And that's how we heal. Hmm. And, and, and some people say, you know, I woke up and I just felt better. Hmm. Or, and, or I exercise and I feel so much better. Hmm. And, 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 and this is what the book is about. You know, and so, I, I know several people who suffer from anxiety. They swear every time they walk, they feel better. Yes. And, and, and that's because, again, even if you're not moving your arms, your left leg and your right leg are moving. And when you do that, you are uniting the two hemispheres of the brain. Mm -hmm. So remember, we always say, oh, so-and-so is right brain, they're emotional. Mm -hmm. So-and-so is left brain, you know, they're analytical. But when you put the two together, you've got a powerful, powerful force. And it's very important that we Put the two together. And we can do that by many different exercises, the most simple of which is walking. Interesting. So interesting. Yeah. You bring us so much interesting information. And we want you to know that Dr. K is going to talk more and more about her experiences and, and why she says the things she says in the coming weeks. So Dr. K, thank you so much. I'm Carol Angela Davis. This is Impact News from all of us here at the Impact family. We thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dr. K. Thanks for having me. See you next week.